a private company can start its business as soon as it gets the certificate of registration. If a public company has a subsidiary which is a private company, then that private company also will be treated as a public company. Private company need not keep an index of its members. That means a registrar containing the details of its members, the private company need not maintain. If it is a private company, then the shareholders cannot transfer the shares to another person. Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce, Vidyashram Pri University College, Temple of Excellence. Welcome to another session on this chapter that is Forms of Business Organization. Now, in this session 3, I will be having a discussion on the types of companies. Now, let us have a look into the what are the different types of companies. Here, we have two types of companies. That is, the first one is a private company. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of the word private company. A private company means a company which restricts the right of members to transfer its shares. Now, what do we mean by restricting the right of members? Now, if it is a private company, then the shareholders cannot transfer the shares to another person. So, they are restricting the right of members to transfer the shares. Now, the second feature of the private company is it has to have a minimum of two members. So, a private company with can be started with just two members and it should have a maximum of 200 members. That is excluding the present and the past employees. So, that is with two and a maximum of 200 members, you can start a private company. Then, the next feature of a private company is it does not invite public to subscribe to its securities and it is necessary for a private company to use the word private limited after its name. So, there are actually three clauses for this private company. First is the members cannot transfer their shares. Second one is there should be at least minimum two persons and a maximum of 200 to start a private company. And the third one is it should not invite the public to subscribe to its shares and it should use the words private limited. So, private limited should be used after its name. So, these are the three main clauses to start a private company. Now, let us look into what are the privileges that the private company has. Now, there are a few privileges here. The private company can be formed by only two members, whereas there are seven people are needed to form a public company. Now, if you look into the privileges as compared to a public company, a private company needs only two members to start a company, whereas a public company needs seven members to start the company. Then, the next privilege here is the private company need not issue prospectus as public is not invited to subscribe to the shares of the private company. Now, for if you want to start a public company, then you have to issue a prospectus, then you have to have an advertisement, then you have to invite the public to subscribe to the shares. So, all these are necessary, but in case of private company, these are all not necessary. So, you need not issue a prospectus at all. You can as it is, you can start a private company. Then, next one is allotment of shares can be done without receiving the minimum subscription. A private limited company can start business as soon as it receives the certificate of incorporation. So, in case of a public company, we should have minimum subscription to start the company. But in case of a private company, you don't need any minimum subscription at all. So, allotment can be done as and when the members subscribe to the shares. And one more important thing is a private company can start its business as soon as it gets the certificate of registration. That is, the company should be registered under the registrar of companies. Whereas in case of a public company, they should get certificate of commencement of business. Then, the next 
privileges of a private company is a private company needs to have only two directors as against the minimum of three directors in the case of a public company. However, the maximum number of both the directors for both the types of companies is 15. Now, the next clause refers to the directors. So, the minimum number of directors in case of a private company is Two, whereas in case of a public company it is three but then the maximum has been fixed at for both the companies is 15. Now next privilege of a private company is a private company is not required to keep an index of its members whereas the same is necessary in case of a public company. So, what do we mean by index of members? So, a private company need not keep an index of its members. That means a registrar containing the details of its members. So, a private company need not maintain. Whereas, a public company should maintain an index of its members because a public company will have a large number of shareholders scattered all around the world and we need to keep maintain a registrar of all those details of all the shareholders and as such a public company is required to maintain an index of its members. Then let us look into the meaning of the word public company. What is a public company? A public company means a company which is not a private company. So, it is very simply, they have just put it very simple words. The company which is not a private company is called as a public company. Now, let us look into what the Companies Act says about a public company. The Companies Act, the public company is one which has a minimum of seven members and no limit on maximum members. So, a public company is one company where there should be a minimum of at least seven members and maximum is unlimited. They have not fixed any limit for the number of members. So, anybody can become a member of a public company, whereas for a private company the number is limited to 200 only. Then next one is there is no restriction on the transfer of shares and securities. So in case of a public company there is no restrictions at all. So you can just transfer the shares and securities. So whenever we need we can just transfer the shares to whomever we want. So this is one of the advantage of holding the shares of a public company. Then the next feature of a public company company is it is not prohibited from inviting the public to subscribe to its shares. Now a public company is called a public company because it is inviting all the subscriptions from the public to purchase its share. So it is one of the features of a public company. So it can invite the members of the public to contribute to the share capital by subscribing to the shares of the company. However, a private company which is the subsidiary of a co public company is also treated as a public company. Now, in case public company has a subsidiary which is a private company, then that private company also will be treated as a public company. So, it can invite the shares from the public or it can invite subscriptions from the public for the allotment of its shares. Now, let us have a comparison between the public company and the private company. Now, regarding the members here, we have in a public company, the minimum is 7, whereas the maximum is unlimited. Whereas in case of a private company, the minimum is 2 and maximum is 200. Then next, minimum number of directors is 3 in a public company whereas in a private company it is 2. Then in the index of members regarding the uh, keeping the index of members in case of a public company it is compulsory whereas in case of a private company it is not compulsory. They need not maintain the index of members. Next regarding the transfer of shares in a public company there is no restriction on the transfer of shares whereas in case of a private company there is a restriction of transfer. You cannot just transfer the shares 
advertise of a private company to another person. Then, invitation to public to subscribe to the shares. Now, a public company can invite the public to subscribe to its shares and debentures, whereas in case of a private company, it cannot invite the public to subscribe to its shares and debentures. So, these are the main features of a public company and a private company. And if you can just remember this table, it will be easier for you to remember the features of a public company and a private company. Now, next, let us look into what are the various ways in which the you have to decide about the choice of a form of organization. Suppose you want to start a new organization. Then what is the best form of organization regarding the factors? Let us just have a look into the factors and which is most advantageous and which is least advantageous. Now regarding the availability of capital. Now what is the amount of capital you need? Suppose you want to start a company. Then you will be in a position to have more capital if the business needs a huge amount of funds. Now, this huge amount of funds can be gathered or collected only if it is a company form of an organization. But then, if you just start it on the basis of a sole proprietorship, then it will not be easy for you to just have that huge amount of funds. And so, we can conclude that the sole proprietorship is least advantageous. So, sole proprietorship suffers from one of the main drawback that is limited funds. Then after that we have the partnership form of organization which also is somewhat better than the sole proprietorship because there will be four partners who will be contributing to the capital. Then if you have a comparison between cooperative society and a partnership firm, a cooperative society there will be members who will be contributing to the capital and the most advantageous position is the joint stock company because it can always attract a lot of capital from the public. So, as it can invite the subscription of shares from the public as such. Then, next factor is regarding the cost of formation. Now, if you look into the cost of formation, one of the cheapest form of organization is the sole trading concern because there are no legal formalities at all and at the most you will have to just get a license for some of the businesses and otherwise you don't need any other legal formalities. So, you can just start a business if you are in a position to have lot of capital to start the business and as such there are no legal formalities whereas in case of a partnership also it is easier to start if you have the written consent of all the partners who are willing to contribute to the business and if the partnership deed is ready and if they get it registered then it is easy to start a partnership concern. But then in case of a cooperative society also the consent of the members of the society is essential to start a cooperative society. Then you get it registered and you can always start a cooperative society. But then the most and the laborious uh, type of formation is of the joint stock company because it requires so many documents to be ready. Then they should issue the prospectors. Then they should get the certificate of commencement and the certificate of incorporation. There are so many things and it is very time consuming and very, very expensive. So, if you want to start the business immediately, the best form of organization is to go in for a sole proprietorship kind of an organization. Then, next factor is on the ease of formation. So, ease of formation means there are no legal procedures at all. In case of a sole proprietorship, as you have observed, there are no legal formalities. Whereas, in case of a, a joint stock company, it involves number of formalities, number of procedures, number of documents to be prepared, that is memorandum of association, articles of association, then certificate of incorporation, certificate of commencement of business. So many documents are to be prepared and then we can say that in a company form of organization is very, very hard to form. Then next is regarding transfer of ownership. So in case of uh, company, it is 
Except private company, a public company, it is most advantageous to have this company form of an organization because ownership can be transferred easily. So, there are no restrictions on transfer of shares and as such you can transfer the shares whenever you need of money you can just sell the shares and transfer the ownership of this company. Whereas in case of a partnership, the transfer of ownership is very, very monotonous process because in case if there is the death of a partner or a retirement of a partner or bankruptcy of a partner, then all the partners will have to again come together and they have to just cancel the previous partnership deed and again form a new deed and then new form and then again reconstitute a partnership organization. So a partnership organization organization is most hardest to form again but whereas in case of a sole proprietorship the ownership will automatically pass to the new next member of the family and whereas in case of a joint Hindu family also the next uh, person who is the head of the family it will be automatically transferred to him and in case of a cooperative society there will be the elected members who will be deciding about the ownership of the cooperative society. So in the least advantage position we have this partnership form of organization. Then the factor regarding the managerial skills, if you think about the managerial skills, the best kind of uh, organization is a joint stock company. Now why we call the joint stock companies in the most advantageous position is if the profession, if the nature of the business requires professional management, then it is best to start a joint stock company because it has a lot of resources at its disposal and it is in a position to hire the best professionals to manage and run the company. So it is better to start a joint stock company if the business requires very good managerial skills. But if it is a sole proprietorship, it is limited to the liability, it is limited to the ability of the sole proprietor. It depends on his managerial skills, how efficiently he is able to run his business, how efficiently he is able to manage its funds. Now, compared to the sole proprietorship, if you take up the partnership form of organization, it will be in a better position because there will be four partners who will be deciding about how the business has to be run. And in case of a joint Hindu family also, we can see that the Kartha will be training all the members of the family in the family run business. So, they will be in an advantageous position compared to a sole proprietor or a partnership form of an organization then but then the least advantageous position goes to the sole proprietorship form of an organization because it solely depends on the managerial skills of the proprietor of that business then now let us look into the factor relating to regulations. In case of a sole proprietorship concern, there are no rules and regulations to be followed. It need not audit the books of accounts and he, he need not publish his books of accounts in any of the newspapers of the country. But in case of a company, it has to follow a lot of rules and regulations. Every year, the company has to publish its final accounts in almost all the popular newspapers of the country. And in addition, it has to pay the tax to the government and it has to get its books audited every year. So there are certain rules and regulations which are mandatory to be followed by the joint stock company. But for a sole trading type of a concern, there are no rules and regulations as such. But in case of a partnership deed and in case of a partnership kind of an organization, they have to follow certain rules laid down by the government. And the same is the case with the joint Hindu family type of a business. The next factor to be considered is flexibility. Now, what do you mean by flexibility? That is the ease of operations, ease of formation and ease of closure. So, with regarding the flexibility, the sole proprietorship concern is most flexible. It can be easily formed and it can be easily closed. But whereas in case of a joint stock company, it is very hard to be formed and even the closure also has lot of procedures to be followed. But in case of a partnership deed, the uh, partnership kind of organization, the partnership can be dissolved based on the mutual consent of the 
partners whereas a joint hindu family business it cannot be dissolved and in case of a society also they have to follow certain rules and regulations for the closure of the cooperative society then regarding the continuity of the business the most advantageous position goes to the joint stock company so we can see the company which has been formed almost 200 years back it is still surviving so why does it survive for a very long time because irrespective of the members who may come and go the company will be remaining in existence forever because a company has perpetual existence so whoever may come they may elect the board of directors may go they may retire or they may die so whatever happens the business will keep on running so we can say that a joint stock company form of an organization has perpetual existence but in the least advantageous position we have the sole proprietorship because if there is the death lunacy or insolvency of the sole proprietor then the business has to come to an end but even in case of a partnership concern also if any of the partners retire or if any of the partners becomes insolvent then it will have a bearing on all the other partners and the partnership organization has to be dissolved and a new organization has to be formed and so we can say that partnership also has a lot of procedures to be followed but in case of a sole proprietorship the continuity is abrupt so it will be there until the sole proprietor is there and once he dies the successors may not run the business so it depends on his successors then the last factor to be considered is liability so in case of liability if you can see the factors regarding the liability the company form of organization is in the best position because in a company whenever you hold the shares of a company your liability will be limited only up to the contribution of the share capital what you are contributing over and above that you need not contribute to the losses of the business but in case of a sole proprietorship or a partnership concern then the private property of the members will be attached to pay off the loans of that particular business but in case of a joint hindu family only the karta will have unlimited liability and all the other co-partners will have limited liability in case of a cooperative society also we can see that all the members liability is limited only up to their contribution to the capital of that particular cooperative society and hence we can say that the in the least position we have this sole proprietorship kind of a organization in case of a sole proprietorship organization the liability is unlimited and the owner has to pay off the debts of the business by selling off his private property in case the assets of the business are not sufficient to meet the debts of the business so if based on all these factors we can just know what is the best form of a organization we can start and then we can just run a business hope you have all understood this session on the forms of organization thank you